Celtic music, whether in Ireland, Scotland, the US or elsewhere, is a vibrant living tradition. As such, it covers a spectrum from those traditionalists who prize above all else the authenticity of repertoire and performance to those looking to stretch the envelope, bring in new influences and keep the tradition fresh and forward-looking. One of the most interesting aspects of the latter trend has been, over the last few decades, the introduction of complex Balkan rhythms into Celtic music. I will try and shine some light into the origins of these Balkan rhythms and show how and why they have so successfully entered the Celtic tradition. The Balkans is a region of southeastern Europe which has a long and unbroken tradition of folk and dance music. The two features which most differentiate their tunes from those of Western Europe are the exotic scales or modes and the complex rhythms. Whereas we are familiar with 2-4, 3-4, 4-4 and 6-8, in the Balkans such time signatures as 5-8, 7-8, 11-8 and 13-8 are all common. The countries where you can find such tunes include Serbia, Romania, Greece and Albania, but it's in Bulgaria and its neighbour Macedonia where they are most common and highly developed. One of the most common dances in Bulgaria is the Padushka, or Old Man's Hobble, in 5-8 time. The Ruchenitsa is a couple dance in 7-8 with the beat split 1-2-1-2-3. A 7-8 tune split as 1-2-3-1-2-1-2 is a set vorno while the Kopanetsa is a line dance in 11-8 time, split 1-2-1-2-1-2-3-1-2-1-2, while a Postupano is in 13-8, split 1-2-1-2-1-2-3-1-2-1-2. To an outsider, such rhythms seem unfathomable and inexplicable. However, once they're broken down into groups of twos and threes, they are far easier to get a hang of. People who do Balkan dancing, rather than counting out the beats, simply think of a simple pattern of long and short beats. A set vorno, for example, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, would be long, short, short. The emphasis or accent usually lies on the first of the long beat, or group of three. A helpful aid for getting familiar with these rhythms is to choose a memorable phrase which coincides with the pattern of long and short beats. So a 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2 could be taking a long bath, while 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3 could be bacon, egg and sausages. For most of the 20th century, music from the Balkans was little heard in the West, the main sources being the international folk dance movement and a handful of folk ensembles in places such as Britain, the US and Australia, organised by people of Balkan heritage. Recordings making it to the West were few and far between, and travel across the Iron Curtain was rare. Fortunately for our story, among the few intrepid travellers from the West was Andy Irvin. Andy Irvin was, in the 1960s, one of a new breed of Irish musicians who was interested in expanding the scope of Irish traditional music. He looked first towards America, where he travelled and performed with musicians such as Daryl Adams and Ramblin' Jack Elliot. In 1968, by now a member of the seminal group Sweeney's Men, he turned his attention eastward and undertook a series of trips to the Balkans, returning eventually with a head full of tunes, a collection of LP recordings and an abiding excitement and enthusiasm for the dizzying rhythms of Bulgaria. He eventually managed to persuade some of his fellow musicians to join him in attempting to play some of these tunes back in Ireland. By 1974, he was in the group Planksty, and together, on the band's second album, Cold Blow on the Rainy Night, they recorded Mominsko Horro, along with the song Banashka's Green Glade, in which Irvin recalled his Bulgarian adventures. The tune proved popular, and was followed on the next album, after the break, with Smekano Horro. Both these horrors are very complex, containing a mixture of time signatures, and quite possibly a fair measure of misremembering and misinterpretation. Nevertheless, musically, they were a bold and highly influential addition to the musical vocabulary of the traditional revival in Ireland, and many other musicians were intrigued. Another version of Mominsko Horro was recorded in 1990 by guitarist Artie McGlynn and fiddler Nolle Casey on their album Lead the Knave. In 1981, Time Dance, a piece composed by Bill Whelan and Donal Lunny, was performed by Planksty during the interval of the Eurovision Song Contest in Dublin. In 1992, Irvin, along with Ilan Piper, Davy Spillane and producer Bill Whelan, recorded an album entirely of Bulgarian and Macedonian tunes. This album, East Wind, showed without doubt that Balkan and Irish musical styles could be successfully fused. It was not a commercial success, but Bill Whelan incorporated many of the ideas into his composition Riverdance for the interval performance of the 1994 Eurovision Song Contest in Dublin. A year later, this expanded into the Riverdance theatre show, which rapidly became a worldwide sensation. Many of the musicians from East Wind were included in the Riverdance band, including Devi Spillane, Martin O'Connor on accordion, Kenneth Edge on sax, Nicola Parov on gadulka, or Bulgarian fiddle, 
By no means all the tunes in Riverdance are Balkan inspired, but Martyr's Dance is pure 15 8, Fire Dance has some 7 8, and the main Riverdance theme has some 14 8 sections. The rhythmic kick and excitement of these rhythms is undoubtedly one of the keys to the musical success of the show, along with the overall demonstration that Irish traditional music, far from being dusty and old fashioned, could easily find a central place in this shiny modern multicultural fusion. Whether consciously or otherwise, Riverdance was the vehicle by which Balkan rhythms entered the consciousness of every Celtic traditional musician from that moment on. It was only a matter of time before others took up the challenge. One of the first bands off the starting block was the innovative and influential Anglo-Irish band Fluke. Their second album, Flatfish, in 1999, included Gentle Giant, a pair of tunes including a traditional Macedonian oro and a self-composed tune, both in 7-8. The next album, Rubai, in 2002, included another 7-8 tune, Calamatianos, while their 2005 album, Haven, had Wrong Foot Forward, a set starting yet again in 7-8. Michael McGoldrick, who left Fluke in 1987, released a solo album, Fused, in 2000, which opens with his own 7-8 tune, Watermans. McGoldrick was in the band Lunasa when they recorded their eponymous first album in 1998, and this included Fiabra, a three-part set finishing with a 7-8 tune Thunderhead, written by flautist Greg Larson. This tune had previously been recorded by Scottish piper Hamish Moore on his album The Bee's Knees with sax player Dick Lee in 1991. While the flute had a natural Bulgarian counterpoint in the end-blown instrument known as the Caval, for the bagpipes it was the Gaida. Nikola Parov of Riverdance fame had shown the world what the Gaida could do. The world of bagpiping is both well-organised and highly competitive, so it's no surprise that many pipe bands, both in Scotland and elsewhere, began including Balkan or Balkan-inspired tunes into their repertoire. The Clan Sutherland pipe band, for example, have an excellent Kopernitzer 11.8 on their 1995 album Pipes and Drums of Scotland. The Scottish band Pipe Down, featuring piper Lee Moore, have a 15.8 tune, the second half of Conrad the Bulgarian on their album The First Measure in 2002. The fiddle has its Bulgarian counterpoint in the Gadulka. This is a pear-shaped instrument played vertically. Without a fingerboard and with a string stopped with the back of the fingernails rather than the finger pads, this is a very difficult instrument for an outsider to master. Nevertheless, the sound, though very distinctive, is at least in the same ballpark as the fiddle. The bazooki, with which Andy Irving first brought Balkan music to Ireland, is itself a Greek instrument, but has now become an integral part of Celtic music. It has its Bulgarian counterpoint in the tambura. The accordion is common in Bulgaria as it is in Ireland. It's perhaps this similarity of instrumentation which in part is the reason why Celtic and Balkan music seem so compatible. Another reason is probably that once you've got the hang of the rhythms, many Balkan tunes, particularly those in 7-8, are actually quite easy to play. They're often based on a very simple question and answer structure which makes them accessible to read and to listen to and easy to compose. The prolific Scottish accordionist and composer Phil Cunningham wrote a 10-8 tune, Lair is Welcome to Cossack, which has been extensively covered by other musicians, including Session A9, Daniel Lapp's BC Fiddle Orchestra, and Katie McNally, who pairs it with the March, Cathcart, also by Cunningham. There appears to be no problem of mixing Balkan and Celtic tunes within a set. Lunasa, for example, have a two-set tune on the Kinity sessions called Bulgarian Rock. Here, a Celtic fiddle tune, possibly a Strathspey, is followed by Dijinovsko Horo in 10-8 time. The Scottish band Shugla Nifty have a set enigmatically titled Full to the Heed a Toots. This consists of a 7-8 horror sandwiched between a jig and a reel. Sometimes two different Balkan tunes can be grouped together. The London-based Artisan Row recorded a 7-8 tune set vono horror and paired it with Macedonian horror in 13-8 on their 2017 album Wild Winds. As Cresh is a two-tune set by Breton fiddler Jackie Mallard with a 5-4 tune followed by another in 7-8. This was also recorded by Claire Fiddler Tolacusti on his 2011 Guidewires album. For some Celtic musicians, the lure of Balkan rhythms is such that they have gone the whole hog and formed bands where this is the main focus rather than just a bit of variety. A fine example of this is Balkan Alien Sound, formed in 2008 by Irish bazooki player Martin Coyle. Like so many others, he was started on the road after hearing Andy Irving's tunes with Planksty in the 1970s. 
He subsequently travelled extensively in Eastern Europe. He persuaded some of his friends to join him on fiddle, accordion, guitar, bass and drums, and their singer, Aidin McGinn, even accepted the challenge of learning to sing in Bulgarian, Serbian and Macedonian. There is also Lazic, a band from Cork, whose main focus is Balkan, along with Gypsy and Klezma, as well as a sprinkling of Celtic music. There is a line of thinking which tries to keep musical traditions pure and separate, but any study of the history of folk music, of any description, will show that intermixing and the absorption of outside influences has always been a vital part of music creation. The apparently unstoppable influence of the Balkans on Celtic music can only be a good thing. <laughs> 